So in this lecture, we're going to go ahead and continue our discussion on software architectures, and we're going to talk about the client server architecture for software engineering. And this is a term that you may have heard before, but maybe you didn't exactly know what it means. And I'll go ahead and just draw a diagram that pretty much illustrates this client server architecture. So we have all these different servers that are dedicated to a certain task. So let's think of it as just a network a company may use. This server could be dedicated to printing, uh, file storage, etc. So we'll call that a server, call that a server, call that a server, and that's a server. So I'll pretty much call all these yellow rectangles um, server processes. So each one of these is a process. And we'll switch to blue. And then we're going to do triangles to illustrate the client processes that's going to act upon these servers. And example printing, this may be like, oh, um, I'm requesting to print, or I want to check the ink, or something along those lines. Um, it depends entirely on your software system. So each of these triangles is going to represent a client process. I'll just go ahead and label all of them as C's. So in short, a client server software architecture has all these interconnected servers and your client processes will act upon those servers to accomplish tasks. And each server is dedicated to a process. So in just a pure dictionary definition, a client server is a distributed system model that shows how data and processing is distributed across a range of components. Again, these components could be like a printer server, it could be a fax machine server, etc. And these clients over here are going to call upon this server to like a print service. And these clients will call upon this server to do fax services, etc. And what are some of the advantages? We'll just label that up here, draw a line to separate that. And then what are the disadvantages of this client server system? Why do we want to use client server and not Dataflow or? repository or any of the other software architectures. Well, in the client server, one of the advantages is that data is straightforward. So it's going to flow from the client to the servers, between servers, etc. There's not really any complications with how how and where the data is going or traveling within this system. And Another advantage is this is effective for networks. So network systems. We'll just abbreviate that, effective networks. So what it's pretty much saying when it's a network system such as a several different um, hardware pieces being connected together and then clients working on upon them to do certain tasks as a network system. So imagine just a bunch of computers connected, um, like a printer, a fax machine, then maybe this one over here is a workstation, something along those lines. And the biggest advantage of this client server model is the scalability. It is very easy to just say, oh, well, I need a new server system for this software. And it's really easy just to add this, net, this uh, fifth server process here and then just add your client processes to it. So it's really easy to alter. It's really easy to add servers on. Likewise, you can do just add, take this server out and it's the exact uh, same system as we had before and it's completely functional that's the biggest advantage with client server it's uh, it's redundancy allows stuff to fall off and then you can you know the system itself will still work and you can add functionality or add more components to the system fairly easily now what's the disadvantage so there are a few disadvantages with the client server model and 
one of the uh, bigger ones is the no shared data model of or I guess the the fact that this model has no shared data so there's in like repository there isn't like this main database that all these servers are accessing together um, each server has their own information they have to re relay it if you know that's what the server system has to do it has to relay between the servers if there is not this common database they all work in and that's really tedious because if you need information from the printer to maybe this workstation over here to the printer you have to go this way and this way you can't go straight through unless you had even more redundancy but once you have too much redundancy then that can get a little complicated and again there's also no just no central register for all the different components all the different data so the fact there is no central database is a big flaw with this software system but I mean as we've talked about just all these different machines and components working together it definitely has advantages and it depends entirely on what your software system is